Emily wants to play is a first-person horror game akin to Five Nights at Freddy's, where the player is tasked with surviving several hours in a house filled with killer dolls and the titular Emily. Atmosphere. The game will often turn the lights out at random, and at the start, before you have a torch, having to go through pitch black rooms can be quite intimidating. The visual style is quite striking, with high contrast photorealistic graphics, many bright lights and dark shadows where it feels things could be lurking. Besides the disarray of the furniture in the basement being kind of creepy looking, there's an eerie silence that gives a sense of anticipation and tension, allowing the player to guess what horrors awaits. But, after the jump scares reveal themselves, the game briefly becomes more intense as the player tries to learn the patterns presented by the dolls, and after several deaths it becomes less intense through repetition. There's also some immersion breaking moments with Emily herself having some extremely janky and almost comical walking animations, and thanks to having to repeat the same sections over and over, you can catch her visibly disappearing before your eyes, breaking immersion totally. Because of the repetitive nature of the game and after several deaths, the atmosphere is all but gone. No Harry Masons. Scares. Near the start, the game tries some cliché creepy moments with some classic misdirection and things moving behind you or disappearing when you turn around, followed by giggling or appliances coming on their own. This wasn't hugely original and wasn't particularly frightening either. The dolls are the star of the show, with each one requiring you to do something different in order to not be killed instantly. This is where the majority of the scares come from. The deaths are loud and dramatic and you sometimes don't see them coming. However, you have to die a certain number of times before you can learn the pattern and sometimes the game is unfair, spawning in dolls that contradict each other at the same time, or spawning in the doll that chases you in an area where you have nowhere to run. This really trivialises the intense jump scares that dying causes and by the mid-game I was completely desensitised to dying. What's worse is the only way I could figure out how to progress was to stand in the doorway and move backwards and forwards which caused the doll that chases you to despawn once you pass the door's threshold. This reduced the game to a chore but allowed me to progress. The final part of the game has you play hide and seek with Emily, which is kind of intense as the timer ticks down, but by then I was so familiar with the layout of the small house that it was very easy to find her. The final challenge of the game combines hide and seek with the other dolls and it's intensely frustrating. The game itself is frustrating and repetitive, and whilst it provides some loud jump scares, that's all it provides. That's no Harry Masons. Sound design. There's no music to speak of besides the creepy menu theme and some incidental pieces to accentuate specific moments, like finding the basement. These are short clips, but they do provide a sense of apprehension when you hear them. The sound effects are pretty generic and there's a lot of technical errors with them. Some things just don't match up at all, like concrete floors sounding like they're made of wood. Some things will be randomly channeled to the right or left ear when they're directly in front of you, like your own footsteps and so on, and some things are just extremely loud for no good reason, with this lamp sounding like a bass amplifier with electrical problems. There are voice recordings scattered about the place and the voice acting in them sounds very lethargic, but maybe that's what they were going for. There's not a lot here, and what is here doesn't work very well, at least on PlayStation 4. That's still no Harry Masons. Gore. There was no gore and it didn't seem like there needed to be any. That's one Harry Mason. Hello? Your pizza's here! Story. From what I could gather, you're a pizza delivery guy called to a house where two people were killed to find Emily who demands you play games with her and her dolls. It's a very shallow, creepy pasta style story with not a lot to go on besides an explanation to what's going on. It's tied up at the end in a rather unsatisfying way, and besides the voice recordings which can explain some aspects of Emily's past, there's not a lot of story besides at the start and at the end, making the final score 1 out of 5 Harry Masons. 
To be honest, my hopes weren't high for this game. Emily Wants to Play feels very rushed and boils down to a red light, green light game with the consequences of failure being jump scares. Its horror starts strong and then fades away as the game progresses. Again, I'd like to remind you this whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I was initially terrified, I did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, and I advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.